Hello everybody, I'm Martin. Today we're back to talk about another really old long-standing technology mod, Industrial Foregoing, which is a recreation of a really, really old technology mod from way, way back called Mine Factory. It was later Mine Factory Reloaded. It has also been added to incorporate parts of other older mods that are no longer updated, including stuff from Extra Utils 2 from the 1.12 days. And today we're gonna to talk about the basics of this mod, how the machines generally work, how you upgrade them, and your general transportation options while working with this mod. So for starters, I should note that if you are using the Patchouli mod, there is a manual for this mod. Now that said, while it does have an awful lot of information in it, it's not as comprehensive as I would like most of these manuals to be. It does get the job done if you're not familiar with this mod. Now this mod has just a ton of machines available in it. it. Like I said, it is one of the longest standing technology mods. It has a little bit of everything. It can fabricate resources. It can handle smelting. It can handle animal processing and ranching. It can do all your general farming and so much more. It also has a whole host of power generation, but you know what it doesn't have? Power cables. So while you could just put any of the large number of generators right next to your machines to keep them powered, you're probably going to need to incorporate another mod that does do power transfer between your machines. So with that, let's get started and take a look at how the machines generally operate. So for example, I'm gonna be using the plant gatherer, which does require external power. So I've got a creative energy cube sitting right next to it, piping directly into the machine. Now you'll notice that all of these machines generally look something like this, where it has a power bar, a progress meter for when the machine is going to act next, possibly fluid tanks or a second progress bar if it has something else it needs to do, and possibly an internal inventory. It also allows you to toggle which sides can be extracted from the various things that come out of it. And it does have a toggle to show you its working area as well as a toggle to show the redstone controls. This panel over here on the right, this purple one, allows for upgrades and these buckets allow for extracting fluids down here. Now, because I clicked the toggle to show the working range, you can see that this plant gather only affects a range of one right now. And that's because these machines do take upgrades. It's not a machine that you manually upgrade itself, you just add plugins to it. And there are four types of upgrades you can add to these machines. There is a processing upgrade where if there's an output this basically acts as fortune and can potentially give you more of them. It does come with the cost of needing more power. These all come in tier one and tier two, and these do not stack. You can only have one or the other in here at a time. There's an efficiency one, which causes it to use decreased amounts of power for the same operations. And then there's the speed one, which significantly increases the progress bar. And the final upgrade is are the range upgrades. And these come in a very large wide range of tiers. And you see if I add this, the range box gets a lot larger. One thing to note is it's not actually a range of nine coming out of the machine, it's a radius of nine, depending on where it started. So this is an 18 by 18 box that actually extends behind my stage. You'll also notice that my machine has these acacia logs that came out of the wall of my stage because that's how efficient this thing is. They just rip them all out and it's constantly going. One of these days I'm gonna think through my demos before I fire them off. Now it should be noted that to make the range upgrades, they actually by default do not require the tier below them to make. They just require progressively more expensive materials as they go up in range. Some mod packs will generally make these require the previous tier to create them, but that's, that's a mod pack by mod pack decision. So now that we've discussed the basics of how the machines work, let's discuss the logistics. And for moving around items and fluids at least, you actually have two different options in this pack. You have the conveyor belts, which have a whole host of upgrades. And then there are the various transporters, the item transporter, the fluid transporter, and the world transporter. So let's start with the conveyor belts. And there are entries in the transport chapter of the mod manual that will explain the basics of it. And overall, the conveyor belts are actually pretty self-explanatory for the most part. The instructions are mostly here. You can add things to the belts to make them move faster or to avoid items being picked up on accident. And there are various upgrades that are mostly self-explanatory, or in the case of the bouncing one, relatively funny. 
So laying down the conveyor belts is pretty easy. You just drop them in the direction you want them to go, but you notice nothing happens. For example, for instance, I'm using the material stonework, which does have an inventory that's just constantly always makes stone in this case, but nothing's coming out. And that's because you have to add the extraction upgrade to the belt to remove items and the insert to add them. So in this case, we're gonna put insert onto this chest, which adds that box there. We can now right click it and you can see that it has a filter and we're gonna tell it, don't take cobblestone because it's set to the blacklist. We can reverse this to a whitelist though. There's also this upgrade that requires them to actually touch the upgrade to be pulled in. You're generally probably gonna want it to pull in all items on the conveyor belt itself. Otherwise they'll just pass by potentially. We'll come down here, we'll add another one. In this case, we'll tell it to take everything. And in this case, we'll just tell it to take everything. Back over here, we'll then put an extraction upgrade on this and you can see it starts kicking the blocks out and they are going down to the second chest to be picked up. You can add glowstone dust to speed them up, although I would have to have done it before adding the upgrade. And you're supposed to be able to add plastic to avoid them being picked up, but I can't seem to actually add them to the conveyor belt. So now I'm wondering if there's a bug because I'm also not picking them up when they're on the belt. So I'm not actually sure what's going on with that one right now, honestly. Looks like it's completely unnecessary though. And finally, you can add dyes to color the conveyor belt. I would have to break this one to be able to apply anything to it because as soon as you click on this, it brings up the filter. But say we want to do something a little more fun. Well, in that case, we can just add the bouncy one and chuck them up into the air. <laughs> kind of like the ejection upgrade from Create. And then if we close the loop, they can just go on their merry way around this circle. Although you could also put it up onto a higher level, stuff like that. There's also a blink upgrade, which will teleport them around in a similar manner. It's just pretty funny looking. It's probably terrible for lag though. Now I should note, you can also transport liquids on these conveyor belts and it more or less works exactly the same way. You just, you just put the extractor on your water source and the insertion upgrade to put it into where you want it to go. And you want to do the same general thing as before. And as you can see, this tank is now filling up. Now, one thing that the fluids cannot do is go up a level. So you can do ramps just like mine carts where this will go up and down hills, but you notice that the water will not flow up this. So for fluid transport, this honestly is not the best. It is funny looking though. So if you're already pulling power from another source, I would honestly recommend doing item transport another way unless you really, really, really want conveyor belts in your base. So now, as I said earlier, there is actually a second option that we can work with here. The world item and fluid transporters. And these are actually an interesting option. So I've got the material stoneworks here. We'll start with the world one. And you just right click these onto the side that you want and the world one dumps them into the world by uh, default. These can only work one block away from the machine that it's attached to. If we attach a world transporter to this chest and then click the center to put it in, you'll notice that this is now pulling in the cobblestone. All of these transporters can be upgraded as well with an efficiency upgrade as well as a speed upgrade clicked on the outer ring on them. The efficiency one causes them to pick up more at once and the speed one causes them to pick up faster. If you right click it, it brings up the interface, which you can allow set filters up for, as well as see the add-ons that are attached to it. The regulate mode right here allows you to dictate how many of an item can be picked up. Like if we put 32 in here, and coming into this chest, you'll see that only 32 were picked up. If we come back into here and turn that back off, it goes up to 64. Now the downside is I don't think it can transfer more than one single stack into an inventory at a time. So just dumping them on the floor like this is probably not what you wanna do. And instead you wanna use the item transport. And the item transport is nearly identical, except it, instead of going into the world, it goes from one inventory to the other. This one is not set to outputting and this is setting to input. And you can see that it immediately transfers them from this inventory into this other target inventory right over here. And as you can see, this does not have a limit of only 64 being picked up at a time. The other thing that I should note is that while it does have to be one block away, it does not have to be one block away in a straight line. You can actually do it in curves like this where it goes around the corner 
or up or down. And I swear to God, I've seen this before from another mod and I can't remember what it comes from, but I swear I saw it in Ethos Project Ozone 2 run through way back a few years ago. And I, for the life of me, can't remember what it's called. But this is pretty much by far the superior transfer method for industrial foregoing. If you're stuck without an item transport from another mod, because that goes extremely fast, especially once you throw the upgrades onto it. But this doesn't mean you can't do completely silly daisy chains like this. Anyway, I hope this is useful for getting people started on industrial foregoing. If you found this interesting and entertaining, please consider me a like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.